And what I said to you guys, what I said to Marco, what I said to you, Simeon, and what I said to um, Joel T. Stunt Double is <laughs> my, my, I'm on the back nine, fellas. Like, I'm lucky to be here. I got shot at when I was a kid. Like, I had a, I was in a battle and, and, I, and, I, and I broke this kid bad so, so bad. He came after me with a, with a fucking two five and shot at me right in my chest. And I was holding the amp and the amp cracked him. I should be dead. You know what I mean? Mm. So wait, like, wait, 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 like I'm a on rap the battle? Batman. A rap yeah, battle. Yeah, I, I, a rap, rap battle. battle. No, rap battle. Rap, rap battle. Hey, what you, say? Broke, broke. you remember what you said? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. What you say? I remember. I remember. <laughs> so, yeah, no, no, no. So, I remember. Yo, so what my, what me and my boys used to do, Um, my my boys used to do their thing. So, in Red Fern. So, my boys used to do their thing. And I used to just, I was that, I was White Mike. Like, I was White Mike from around my way. Like, that's, you know. Before I was MC Search, I was White Boy Mike. Like, so I would just, oh, here come White Boy Mike, and I'd be rhyming and whatever. But I wouldn't rhyme off the top of my head because, like, people would test me. So I couldn't spit any written shit. Like, I would get roasted because these dudes were wittier. They were funnier. So the only way I could compete was to be able to break them down in front of them, in front of their people. So they knew I was real. So that was my whole thing, rhyming off the top of the head, rhyming off the top of the head, rhyming off the top of the head. So my man Mass and my man Un said to me, like, yo, we're going we gonna to get this bread. So what they would do is they would go to, like, Vandermeer Projects. They would go to, um, like, we would go outside um, Brooklyn Armory before, before a show. And they go and they would be doing a little hustling and in the middle of their hustling be like, yo, who's the, who's the nicest MC in your projects? Oh, it's my man, blah, blah, blah. They're like, yo, we're going to bring my man search to battle. Your man, a hundred. They were like, pet. So what I would do is I would be going to the Latin quarter on Friday nights. So Friday nights go to Latin quarter. When you took the A train, you know, the A train went through the whole city. So I'd stop in Brooklyn. Right. And I, I know I'm like if I had to go to Kingston and Troop or whatever, I like it if there was a battle. So I'd come up and they would purposely met. My boys were brilliant, brilliant marketing guys. The battle would be right outside the train. Right outside. So the cypher would be right outside where the train came up. Right. And there was no pages or nothing. It was all time like, yo, you're going to be on the 414 out of Far Rockaway, which gets to Kingston and Troop at 557. Right? The whole thing come around, all the money getting passed around, dudes in the middle, I come up, that search, and the money would escalate. <laughs> the white boy, <laughs> 600, eight, like, and because the, it was, it, they thought that my man was the dumbest kid on earth. You gonna let the white boy rhyme against my man? And I'd come up, Nerdy glasses. I, I got pictures. I looked like the biggest fucking herb you, you ever saw. White man can't jump like that. <laughs> no, not That's even white man. No, not even with him. Hold on. I, I wait, hold on. I, I'll try to pull up a picture. Hold on. I'll try to. Oh, I can't. Okay. I I I, I have a picture of me and King Sun hanging in the land quarter. I, I just not King even Sun. white man can't jump. I'm looking kind of fly, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> hold on. I, hold on. I gotta pull up this picture now uh, so you can understand. What the fuck I'm talking about? <laughs> so, hold on. Here, I don't. If y'all can see that, that's me. Yeah, I can see in that. The land quarter. That's King Sun right there. I got, yeah, I got. That's I can King Sun, that. and that's me with my with my fucking shirt and my right. But look at the glasses. Look at glasses and a fucked up haircut. So see that, right? So I'm battling King. Like the King Sun dude is like every dude I ever battled in Brooklyn, in the five boroughs, and here comes this dude. How are you gonna fucking put your money down, right? Like it's like, <laughs> right? like yo, and, and the money would you? It was the it was the best shit in the world. And what they didn't realize was I had already rhymed in front of Jam Master J. May he rest in peace. I was already on. Like I had the greatest DJ in the world look me in my face after I rhymed and went, "Man, if white boys start rhyming like that, we're finished." Yo, you gotta come on the road with me and yeah. Like I already had his blessing like you couldn't tell me shit like you couldn't tell me a motherfucking thing especially no kid in the fucking projects i'm gonna fucking bake you right so here i come and there's no white there's no white people i used to tell people the only white people in the hood 
right? When I was in the project, the only white people were police. I was the only dude, <laughs> right? Only dude. So I come up the stairs and they would start, ah, 100, 200, 500, right? And of course that dude would go first. Had to, always, always went first. And it was always a written. Guy would start beatboxing. <laughs> And he would start rhyming his his rhyme, yada, yada, yada. It was always a diss rhyme. And the diss rhymes were kind of, you know, towards me because I was the sucker MC he was in front of. And it was a rhyme that everybody knew. So some of them would, re, you know, say, um, oh, oh, and I would just sit there. And I'd literally just sit there. And the whole time I'm just listening. Right, and I and then it would be my turn, and the guy would start beatboxing. I'd be like, "Yo, no, 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 no beat. I just want to go acapella." And I'd be like, "Yo, that last thing you said about coming off of my head, yo, that shit is dead." You've got to, and I would just fucking break him. And you would just see people's eyes go, because I would be taking his words and I'd be taking his clothes, and I, I mean, I, I mean, I'd be breaking this kid down to his fucking sneakers. Mm. And then, and all you would, and his whole crew would go from him to like, oh, oh. <laughs> I mean, not even, not even little, oh, 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 oh. So now he's going to spit his next verse and he's already trembling. And this was like, this, time after time after time, he's already trembling. So now I'm going to, now I'm going to take it up a notch. Now I'm going to break down every line he spits and make it better in front of him and his people. Like, that was my shit. Like, I remember t telling this kid, he goes, he, he, this one kid, he said something. He said, he said, yo, my, my, my gold is out of control. Yo, because I am. He said, son, 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 son. He said, because and all my gold that I hold is out of control because I am hip hop. And I remember that was the last rhyme he said. And I said, yada, da, da, da. And I said, yo, I said, I said, I said, money, that gold, that shit is fake. You ain't hip hop. You're flip flop and that fucking chain. You made that in metal shop. <laughs> <laughs> and you just saw the, the cash getting passed. You just saw the cash getting passed. But the other reason we were near the train is because these dudes would get so mad. They would try to, they try to fucking Dead. stick me up. So I had to dip, like I get my money, dip. dip. And that was it. So one yeah. time, so one time we were rhyming, I was battling like right around Vandermeer projects, right? Spanish kid. Spanish kid got all his boys. I mean, same situation. But this particular time, like I was just in a zone, like, you know, like when they talk about athletes, when they're shooting the fucking, the hoop is like the size of the fucking ocean you can't miss. Yeah, shit was in slow motion. You were just looking at everything. You was like looking Dude, at Dude, so this, this kid <laughs> is in front of me, and, and he, you know, Puerto Rican kids fly, the whole thing. I come up. I mean, but these kids were really working the block. I mean, as soon as the money went from 100 to like 1,000, 2,000. Like, the money was big. And this kid starts rhyming, yada, yada, and he, he, whatever, blah, 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 blah. And this part I don't remember, but yada, yada, And then I hit him. And I just hit him. And I hit him, and I hit him, and I hit him. I talked about his Kango, and I talked about his Cellies, and I talked about, you know, and I just broke him down. Same thing happened. Oh, oh, oh. Comes at me, second rhyme. But there's something different, because the second rhyme, he's mad. Like, he's not shook. He's mad. And he's pointing at me, and he's mad, and he's like rhyming, and the beatbox is going. But you could see, like he's, he's, he's that Puerto Rican prod is getting in him. You know what I mean? Like he's mad. But I'm listening. I'm not even. I don't give a fuck what he's doing. I'm just listening. I'm listening. And he hits me with some Spanglish at the end, right? He hits me with some Spanglish shit, right? So then I realized that he was like really. And man, I broke this kid down. But the last three lines I said to him, I'll never forget. I said, so you might as well put that new port out because you know that I just smoked you. And before you say anything else, shh, la boca. 
<laughs> when I told this kid Cayete La Boca, it was a wrap. It, I mean, and this dude, he dips out. Now, this one particular battle, my boy, Grandmaster Reggie Reg and the Players Club were doing a party that night, a block party. They were in the, they were doing in that in that in that project. But I had to dip and watch. Um, I was going to go watch Slick Rick and Dana Dane and, um, and Dougie Fresh at the Latin Court. I wasn't going to miss that. So I go, pocket full of cash, good. I dip back up, party's ending. And I always help my man carry, you know, break down his set. I'm breaking down a set, breaking down. And he says, yo, grab the amp. And I had one of those big-ass crown amps. Yeah, I, rem- I don't know if y'all remember, but they... These crown amps that would plug up into the systems, they were they were literally this big. They mm-hmm. had 15, they had like 15 different um tubes in them, glass tubes with metal conductors on them, you know, to so I mean they were this big. And I'm carrying it and I'm facing a crowd and I see homeboy and I look over to my man and I hear pop. This real pop. And the thing just falls apart in my hand, cracks. Mm. And I look up, and the dude, he's pointing again at me. It's like 50 yards. Ping, spark with dip. And he's, and he's flaming at me, and I just I dipped into the yard. So I, when I tell you I'm on, I'm on the back nine on borrowed time, like it's for real. And, and Wait, wait, wait. That was the same guy you battled, followed you to the joint? Yeah. He didn't follow me. I went, I left, I left, went to see... Dana Dane and Slick Rick and Dougie Fresh at the Latin Quarter and came back at like three or four o'clock in the morning to help my man break down to oh, head okay, home. Okay, okay. Oh, and he and then that, and he and he was there. Oh man. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, um, but yeah, but I mean, you know, and, and again, it was there was nothing sweet about being at block parties. Like, you know, there was it wasn't all fun and games, like it was dangerous. Um, and it certainly was dangerous for a white boy who just baked some dude in his own neighborhood. You know what I mean? And got all his money. <laughs> right. All his re- and I got all his re up. I mean, they put up, I mean, they they damn put up all their re up. But um, but that's how I got my reputation in New York was as a battle MC. That's actually how I got signed, and that 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 was my MO. Because I really my records weren't great, but I performed my, I, I danced my ass off. I, I worked my ass off. I got on. But when I say I'm on the back nine and my commodity, my, the most valuable commodity I have is my time. Is, is And that's the reason is because I value it so much. I remember when I was a kid, there's a, I wanted to be a rabbi when I was a kid. So I remember studying this book uh, called the Talmud. And the Talmud is basically these rabbis who all got together and they read the Torah front to back and they would break down each little portion of the Torah and they used this book to kind of make notes about what they thought and what they thought and what they thought. And there's a section in the Talmud that talks about the whole idea of age, right? When Moses died, he was like 563 years old. And when David died, he was 397. So there's this whole concept, right? Because we didn't have clocks, right? They, they measured time by the, the seasons, right? By the by the moons and all of that. So one rabbi wrote in the Talmud, he said, you know, he believed that when we are all born, we're all, all born with only a certain amount of words in our mouths. And when we get to our last word, we die. So speak every word as, as, as if it's your last, right? And then another rabbi argued, no, it's not words, it's time. That when we're born, the Most High gives us only a certain amount of time in our life. So don't waste any of that time because you never know when that time is up, when your time is up, right? So I agree with both. I agree that when you're on your deathbed, you're not going to be asking for more money. You're going to be asking for more time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, so when I say I'm on the back nine and that most valuable commodity of mine is time, I'm not wasting no, my time on no bullshit artists. I'm not wasting. If I can't find another Nas, fuck you. Keep it moving. 